Now let's finally get our hands on a practical part. We will create a new project, set up our hardware and handle IO mapping. Let's get started with Automation Builder. So we started Automation Builder software. I will use Premium Edition simply because it's installed on my laptop and I don't need to run Virtual Machine to show you Basic Edition. But everything I show will look exactly the same as in Basic Edition. On the start page, besides some basic commands like create new project or open existing one, you'll find a number of links to some useful PLC related sources. I encourage you to go and explore them. I'm sure you'll find something useful there. To create a new project, we simply click on the corresponding link in the top left corner of the page. The software asks us to put the name and the location of the project file. It is always a good idea to use dedicated folder for every project. Once you start developing and compiling your application, Automation Builder will create a number of additional files at the same level as the main project file. And you can imagine, if you put it on a desktop, you will have a file mess in no time. Project name should have at least some meaning as well. As a template, select AC500 project and click OK. And since we have selected AC500 project as a template, the software offers us to select the specific device we're going to use in the project. If you know where to look, you can filter by category and select CPU model straight away. Or you can search for desired product by typing the name. Since we already have project's electrical diagram, it's a good idea to give devices the same name as in the schematic. And after hitting Add PLC, Automation Builder will create default hardware configuration structure for PM5072 CPU. In the option slot 1 of the CPU, we have analog option board TA5120 inserted. Let's reflect that in our configuration. Right-click on the option slot 1 element, select Add Object, find the option board, give it a name, and click Replace Object. Option board will be inserted. Now we need to add DA501 module to the CPU's IO bus. Right click on IO bus element, and again, if you know which category the module is in, we can navigate there or we can simply type the name to the search box and select from filtered out list. Don't forget to give the module a proper name. But even if you forgot to do so, you can rename the module later. Now we need to configure analog IO channels properly, because by default all analog IO channels are not activated and will not work. So double click on A2 module and in the vertical tab parameters we have channel configuration parameters for input 0 and 1. As you can see, default value is set to not used, so we need to change it to the type of signal which is coming from the transmitter. In our case, it's 420 milliamps current signal. Check channel parameter will define whether module reacts or not to the transmitter's short circuit or wire cut. By default, this option is enabled. And then we configure input 1 the same way. Module A3 also has IO channels, so we repeat the procedure. Go to Parameters tab and change channel configuration for I0, I1 and I2 to PT1000 to wire value. Analog output 0, which is used to give speed reference to the variable speed drive, has to be configured as 420 milliamps. And that's pretty much it for IO configuration. Digital inputs and outputs, if they are not used for some special tasks like fast counting, do not require any configuration. Next step is to handle IO mapping. In general, all IO channels have unique address identifier, but unless you really know what you're doing, it's a bad idea to use those addresses in your control application. Instead, symbolic variable names are usually used. And the process of attaching variable name to the specific IO channel is called IO mapping. 
There are three ways how you can do it in Automation Builder, and each way may suit better for one or another task. Let's start with PM5072 onboard I.O. channels. Click to the vertical tab I.O. mapping, then Digital Inputs, then Inputs DI0, DI3, double-click Variable field of the input DI0, and type the name I underscore X auto pump one. Hit enter and the variable with specific name is created. Description field allows you to elaborate more on how the channel is used. The second method allows you to attach already existing variable in the project to the specific I.O. channel. You can imagine this could be useful if you start developing control application without electrical drawings ready. Then you can proceed with project development and do I.O. mapping on a later stage. The same way you double-click variable field of the input DI0, only this time instead of typing the name, click this three dots button and locate desired variable inside the project. Click OK, hit Enter and get the result. You may have noticed that the icon in the mapping column has changed and now reflects the second mapping type. The third way of I.O. mapping will require some settings change. We double-click on CPU object in the hardware tree, then go to PLC settings, check Enable Symbolic Access for I.O.s, and then press Yes. And now if we go to Code section, we can access embedded I.O. channels by tapping the name of the module. Onboard underscore io dot an automation builder will show the list of variable sub elements of the module we select fast inputs di0 di3 and since it's a byte variable we need to access bit 0 of this byte to get the value of digital input 0 this type of mapping is usually used in bigger projects where you have separate part of the control application which handles IO forcing, simulation, filtering, etc. Sometimes it's called IO isolation layer. Anyway, we still have to finish IO mapping process. Keep an eye on the schematics and put IO names to the channels one by one. First for onboard IO channels then for analog option board A2 and finally for analog digital module A3. There's one trick which somehow makes IO mapping process less tedious. For every IO module there is a tab called IO mapping list which gives you pretty much the same information as before except maybe terminal column but in a flat table form. And the cool part is you can select everything, copy it, and then paste it into a spreadsheet. Even cooler is that it works in the reverse as well. You can copy the table in the Excel window and then paste it into Automation Builder with all the channel mappings and descriptions. And even that is not all. If we go to PLC settings, find IO mapping list tab, we can see all inputs and outputs of the PLC in one flat list. If you're asking, is it possible to pull the same trick with Excel here? The answer is yes indeed. You can do all IO mapping preparation in Excel and then just paste it into Automation Builder in one shot. I will leave the link to this spreadsheet in the description section below the video so you can try it yourself. I will also leave the link to the project file so you can follow along. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.